Hello. Good evening to all of you here tonight. I wish I could be there in person to thank you for the honor you've chosen to bestow on me. It's truly a privilege and humbling to even be considered as a legislative friend of education by such a wonderfully talented group of professionals that you all represent. All of you wonderfully dedicated public servants have always held a special place in my heart for the work you do in caring for, educating, and raising our children to be the best they can be. You teachers, paraprofessionals, administrators, maintenance workers, cafeteria workers, and bus drivers all dedicate your lives to making all of our children's lives better. And for the most part, you are under, underappreciated and certainly underpaid, but still willing to be the most responsible persons in those children's lives. Indeed, while others purport to know what's in the best interest of the children, you do the work. As I reflect on the attitudes toward public education and the myriad of misguided attempts at offering expert opinions on education reform, what's good for the children, and all of this by these various consultants, nonprofits, and political leaders whose only experiences in the complex field of education was the fact that they went to school. I cringe at the potential damage they will do to the legitimate needs of educators and their students. The shallowness of the thought that a successful learning experience can be measured by a test, or that the quality and ability of professional educators can be ascertained through that same structure is mind-boggling, and quite frankly, an insult to our intelligence. To think or propose that public education is better served if we dilute an already dwindling supply of available funds by creating an alternative, publicly funded private system of schools that are geographically or academically exclusive to some children is intellectually dishonest. Those pots of money available to the private sector or anyone else who can craft a proposal, no matter how unproven or illogical, that purports to address this so-called education reform movement surely will inspire any snake oil salesman within shouting distance to cast their bait hoping to snag a lucrative fish with a fake worm. Plato said, do not train children to learning by the force and harshness, but direct them to it by what amuses their minds so that they may be better able to discover with accuracy the peculiar bent of the genius of each. I think that's a sound statement to make that all of you educators believe in. And I apologize if I sound unduly harsh, but the basic realities I must deal with are the facts that when we try to rate education systems as some type of global performance potential measure, then we should not ignore the real fact that the top three rated countries in education have less than a 5% poverty rate for their public school children, while the United States, the richest country on the planet, chooses to ignore the reality of well over a 40% poverty rate for its public school children. Choosing to invest in a magic bullet theory of education reform that involves national competitions for access to money that should be given with no strings attached is policy that's doomed to fail. In conclusion, and I don't have to be there in person to appreciate that collective sigh of relief that I'm finally concluding, I want to tell all of you that I do not consider this honor you've chosen to bestow on me as an acknowledgement or appreciation for what I've done in the past, but more an inspiration to do more in the future for all of the children and for all of you whom I admire so very, very much. I promise you that I will try to live up to your expectations and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for your service. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening.